Hello and welcome to the MBS show episode number 513. I am your host Norman Sanzo and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is third preview reveal for Little Pony role playing. Little Pony. I think Seth forgot to put in my. Anyway, uh, my Little Pony role playing game core rule book Earth Ponies. We have another teaser page for the my Sorry, I I'm just pondering. This this was not a mistake. This was intentional. So my little pony role playing game called Rule Book today. Earth Pony is the focus of this one with Apple Jack Pinkie Pie and Apple Bloom representing them. If you missed the previous page, you can find them. Uh, you can find the chatty trait over here, and of course, you can pre-order the core rulebook here. Expect release date in June. So, what do we have here? Uh, remember when I say about um, racist and uh, species or whatever it is? So, when you click on this, there's a brief description of uh, what an Earth Pony is in the uh, role-playing game universe, or in this role-playing games universe. <clears throat> so, Earth Pony, uh, tough and resourceful Earth Ponies keep their hooves on the ground. They rarely develop spell casting powers, but make up for it with hardiness and persistence. When an Earth Pony needs to get something done, they rely on their grit and wit. Earth Ponies have a special connection to nature. Historically, they use their natural connection to tend the, sorry, to tend to the planet. Po Earth ponies uh, garden and gather with the renewal of resources and the growth of the natural world in mind. <clears throat> of the three types of ponies, Earth ponies are the most into collaboration between the different types of ponies being overall sorry being overlooked for their lack of spell casting and flight makes many earth pony f fiercely proud while others can be self conscious still many earth ponies ignore the criticism and set out to be the best earth pony they can be so, after reading this, what I gathered or interpret is that, okay, first things first, uh, your character here cannot learn any spells. Uh, it says they rarely develop spell casting powers. So, if your character, uh, if you're building a character, uh, keep in mind that spell casting is a no go. Uh, this reminds me of a. Another character in D and D, or a class of characters in D and D, which are the barbarians. The barbarians, their gimmick is kind of they don't really focus on spell casting, and spell casting for them is kind of impossible. <clears throat> they don't have enough stats for them. So what? And from what I can tell from this one, it's basically a comparison between them. So uh, this one tells me that Earth Ponies don't cast powers, but they are, how to say, um, hardiness and persistence. So that means they're really tough. Uh, they're, they're tough and they're hard to take down. So basically when you're building, I'm not 100% sure how the game is going to work, but in D&D terms, when you're building an Earth Pony, is basically the tank. So, uh, I imagine it's going to be, um, this is going to be in the front line, soaking up all the damage, kiting all the aggro, and just being there for your squishy spellcasters to not get hurt. That's what I think. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's any combat in this game, <clears throat> or if there's any Hard combat, like how D&D &D goes. 
And one of the few things that I noticed here is uh, of the three types of ponies, our ponies are the most into collaboration between the different types of ponies. So what this tells me is that Earth ponies here, their role is support. N not support in type uh, in terms of healing or whatever. Probably you can. It would be interesting to see what you can do. M maybe you create a Earth pony that is uh, Zakura type, uh, who specialize in uh, medicine and can create medicine on the fly and whatnot and create herbs and potions. That, that could be very interesting. So yeah, this tells me that the game is honestly well thought out. I, I can't wait to see the other two, Unicorns and Pegasi. How, how are they going to work? Because um, obviously we know that with Pegasi you're going to fly, so that's going to be your advantage there. Uh, unicorns can cast spells, but what type of spells are you going to cast? Offensive, defensive, uh, and outside of the game, how is that going to be? And what kind of spell is do you have? And Pegasi, what, what's your gimmick? We know you can fly, that's one thing, but what else can you do? Are you sneaky? Are you speedy? Are you... I mean, there's a lot of things that can... Uh, there's, sorry, there's a lot of questions that I have and when you look at the characters that we have like for example Fluttershy. Fluttershy is Pegasi but she has a acute connection to nature which is kind of an earth pony thing and she talks to animals and all that stuff so to me that's her gimmick so is it pick a race then pick a background and then that I think so I mean, it feels like you can mix and match a lot of things you can go for the optimal build where um, for example earth pony a background that says that uh, you're probably a royal guard so that works really well or you could go really chaotic and do something like a unicorn that's really bad at magic for a background. I don't know, maybe their parents is a baker or something like that. You could do that if you want to. So that'll be very interesting if it does uh, go to that route or go to that example if it does. So yeah, um, there's, there's much info for it. So let's move on to the next news. <clears throat> My Little Pony 40th Anniversary Exhibition opens in Shanghai. Hasbro has opened a pop-up gallery in the center of Shanghai to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the My Little Pony franchise with art and fashion showcase based on the various generations of My Little Pony. According to an official Weibo, Weibo, Weibo post, the 40th anniversary exhibition is open from... May 20th to June 11th at 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day and is located at 862-864 Huai Hai Huai Huai I'm not gonna even try Middle Road in Huangpu District, Shanghai in addition to prints, paintings, sculptures, and clothing created by Hasbro and its partners and licensees, the gallery appears to include a section of art submitted by children who are fans of Marvel Pony Friendship is Magic. So, yay! This looks cool, this looks awesome. And, wow, um, let's just open everything up. Let's see what's the, what we have. Okay, that's the poster. All right. So, <clears throat> look at this page. We see the uh, gateway to the exhibition hall. We see some art. And I'm probably guessing this... Oh, yeah, there, there's a description here about the art here. Uh, could 
be work from a fan or professional but uh when we see uh, the art we we see that there's g1s here in, and see there's g5 g4's logo and we we see the four, uh, 40 years of uh, pony history here going on from uh, the logos to the characters and whatnot representing uh, four decades of ponies and as we go on we see that uh, we, there, there's a lot of art and I'm guessing most of this are uh, official and we see the background the wallpaper settings the light decor is very on theme uh, the art here is just amazing this is from the outside and this is the fashion which is kind of cool a little bit too girly for me but hey uh let's see this collection is uh inspired by gen one my little pony and megan williams megan will sorry megan williams is a sweet natured young girl sorry young girl the Give me a second. Let's see if I can zoom in. All right. Uh, let's see. Girl, girl, the bearer of the rainbow of bearer, young girl, the bearer of the rainbow of light, contained inside her heart shaped locket. Megan Williams' birthday celebration ball. Birthday celebration ball. Every little girl is. Invited to Pony Land. Pony. Wow, I'm struggling this one. Uh, the children's wear collection encompasses the zero silhouette shape, uh, the textile print showcase Gen 1 ponies and Megan Williams. The color scheme represents uh, representation of the pastel of colors in g1 wow that was struggling for me but yeah uh this is this is cool um i'm not too sure about the sleeves and shoulder pads but yeah this looks cool and i can see what you mean by uh, color inspired by the gen 1 pony themes like pastel colors and whatnot yeah uh, that makes sense uh, we see two out of the three designs here, and they look good. Yeah, wouldn't put. <laughs> I wouldn't let my daughter wear it outside. It looks so uncomfortable and so easy to tear. Uh, we do see there's something from Easy from behind. That's that's gonna be very interesting. And this is on brand for rarity. So let's see. Um. Ah, fan art! Yay! Uh, 11 year old, 13 year old, 10 year old. And they look, yeah, they, they look good, they look good. Oh, wow! Uh, stickers that I think you can collect. Uh, elegance, adventurous, sweet tooth. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what these are. Look like stickers. <coughs> Paper mache pony. I'm guessing this is easy. There, there's a plaque there that. Oh no, you can see here. Uh, there's a plaque there that says what it is, but not, not, not for me here. Um, the exhibition hall. Hey, that that. Oh man. Uh, oh, I think what you're supposed to do is grab one of those stickers and paste it on a pinky here. And I've seen this pinky in real life before. Uh. The model is not bad. And this is just the location and date, yay. So, honestly speaking, this is one of those events where I'm happy that it just exists and I'm wondering why Ch China? I, hmm. How, how do I put this? Usually when you hear about celebrations and whatnot especially for a brand you, you would think that hey probably 
um, the US, highly high chances probably in the US. US celebrates their 40th anniversary or something like that, and uh, that's gonna be awesome. So they're gonna go all out and whatnot and do stuff. But I haven't heard anything. So uh, China does it. So that's fascinating. Where they what you call this? Where they have a art exhibition uh, showing off po uh, four decades of ponies and so on. And with what you call this? Uh, the western side of things we don't see anything uh, over here in Southeast Asia uh, I haven't heard anything about uh, ponies in uh, Malaysia, Singapore or even Thailand uh, those are the three con well, in all honesty, Malaysia not so much the two countries that I would place my bet on for something like this to happen is Singapore and Thailand but there's nothing to there's no news on it so yeah so <clears throat> it's fascinating that china's doing it instead of the us but hey i'm not complaining so let's move on to the last news for the week and another round of my little pony pop mart figures has appeared uh pretty me up last year pop mart released a set of high quality model pony toys that people around the fandom love they were apparently successful with yet sorry, successful. We have yet another set this time based around ponies visiting the spa with multiple of the main six up for grabs. Uh, their Twitter page announced them will release sorry, their Twitter page announced them with a release date of the sixteenth of this twenty sixth of this month, sorry. With so expect them soon. Apparently, I'll I'll get a reminder once they're available. Get more below. We so just three pictures, really, nothing more. Let's see the Twitter page. Uh, give me a second just to be safe. I I don't want to accidentally bump into something bad. Okay, is it safe? Oh, oh, but you know, there's a pony convention going on in Japan. Hmm, cool. Anywho, uh, let's see. This one, yes. And here we go. All right. So, Pop Mart, uh, the ritual of life is making, uh, sorry. The ritual of life is to make up together with My Little Pony. What is that phrasing? The ritual. Uh, take a shower, do skin care, start makeup, do hair styling, get ready now. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, by that phrasing there, I can clearly tell... Uh, write it in Chinese, put it into the, what you call this, uh, Google Translate, put it in English. Okay, done, let's go. <laughs> Man, that's just scary when you say ritual and then uh, take shower. <laughs> Boy. So, um, yeah, those are the same, what you call this. Um, uh, that's, that's the same uh, picture that we got here. All right, anywho, um, popping up. So... We see, as per usual, um, in pr the previous uh, set, there's two of each. So we see there's two Apple Jacks, two Twilights, two Rainbow Dash, two Pinkie Pies, two Fluttershies, and two uh, Rarity. And one super special awesome hidden pony, which is going to be Celestia. <clears throat> And when we take a closer look, we see, yeah, the pony is just uh, getting up, J just just hanging out in the spa, um, pampering themselves with uh, all that good stuff. And <clears throat> if you're probably wondering, how much is this going to cost you 
is it going to be how, how's the quality the most important part is the quality and funny thing that you didn't ask <laughs> is that here we go i got one myself yay oh no it's out of focus oh no it's so small um i i wonder this is gonna screw me over big time give me a second Okay, so, all right, there we go. No, it doesn't work that way. Oh no, it doesn't work that way, no. I guess you can see Fluttershy. So anywho, um, Fluttershy here... Give me a second. <clears throat> Fluttershy here looks really well made. Like, uh, the construction, the base, the material, everything about her here is just awesome. Uh, and I bought her for about... 49... Sorry... 40, 45 ringgit um 45 ringgit is equivalent to about ten dollars so yay so yeah um this figure here is i i say worth the money with the design the quality and i'm out of focus give me a second Background needs to get blurred a bit. Okay, sorry. Um, so, anyway, like I was saying, <clears throat> uh, with the build, the molding, and the just the overall, uh, what you call this, uh, works, uh, craftsmanship on this one, it's worth the cash. Well, one of the negatives that if you don't buy the full set uh, is that. <laughs> You won't get everything, and it's kind of a gacha system where I'll buy one box and get probably, let's just say for me, I'll get Fluttershy who is putting on lipsticks. Oh, that's cute. <clears throat> so I'll just say I'll get that, and then I still need to, if I'm a completionist, uh, one, two, three, four, so wait, it's six, twelve, thirteen. So probably there's uh, 13 ponies, I just got one and I'm, I'm a completionist, I need to get 12 but I don't want to buy uh, all of them at the same time, which is kind of dumb. Technically if you want all of them, just buy the whole set. Uh, probably you'll get a bit of a discount if you get everything. Probably what, uh, if if one box is... 10 and if you buy the full set that's probably going to cost you about 130 dollars and maybe they'll give you a bulk buy discount maybe you'll get everything for 110 probably i don't know uh, depends on the shop location and if there's a deal like that so yeah that would be awesome like get everything and collect uh, just get a full set um, i i know some people do that and that's awesome and that's cool uh, for me uh, money scarce like i said 45 um uh, for 45 ringgit for me here is steep and if i'm timing that with 13 that's about 550 sorry 585 ringgit and that is a lot of money so yeah, uh, if you have the extra income, go do so. If you just want to buy one and be happy with what you get, hey, that'll be fun too. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, that's the news for this week. So let's move on to the next topic. What have I been doing in my week? <clears throat> so what have I been doing in my week? Uh, hmm. Watch a movie. And said movie was Fast 10, which I thought was going to be the last movie for the franchise. But no, it's not. So, uh, wasn't 
uh, that movie wasn't really on my radar of movies to watch, but a friend of mine said, hey, let's go watch it. And I wasn't doing anything, so we did. We watched, it was an action movie, so yay. Uh, not going to talk about the story or the plot. I mean, it's a Fast and the Furious movie, so you kind of know what you're getting into. So, it was fun. Uh, the characters were compelling. And there was a scene where... Um, who was her name? Rodriguez. Uh, the, the lead female role. Uh, she was stuck in a frozen tundra. And it reminded me of Dungeons and Dragons because she was in the frozen tundra. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that was a lot of fun. So, other than that, um, the usual, I guess, but I, I ain't gonna bore you with that. So, yeah, that's, that's been my week. Um, not, haven't really been planning ahead. Um, doing, taking things one step at a time. So anyway, uh, let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambushio.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at WS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and stay to radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on live.com. Links are in the show notes. Um, please also, please subscribe and rate us on... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you can catch me, Silver Quill, Jacob, and probably Totera reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, specials, movies. Sometimes we like to do other things than ponies, and those can be uh, cartoons, animes, comic books, mangas, video games, movies, or whatever tickles our fancy. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also Master of Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya.